Hi everybody. So regular viewers of the channel are going to know that I have a deep and abiding love for science and technology. I love mechanics. I love motors and engines, generation and power storage, all that kind of thing is the sort of stuff I really like to get into. And particularly, I suppose, I have a bent for wind. I have a bent for wind generation because, oh well, there's a couple of reasons really. One is that it's the most popular form of renewable energy. And for all the best will in the world, whatever you think about solar, it forms a second cousin. Wind is something that we can do ourselves. You just need a workshop and you can go out and make yourself a wind turbine. For solar, you need some pretty industrial kit that you're not going to get hold of very easily. So wind, I think, is a great thing for people to be working on to make their own generation. And I'm very enthusiastic about it. But being enthusiastic isn't the same thing as being naive because wind has a problem. And the problem is it's a little bit of a Wild West show. There are all kinds of wind turbines popping up every now and then, splashed through the news as the latest greatest thing that is going to be the one pill for all ills. Now, unfortunately, of course, that isn't true, and it becomes a bit of a problem on how to distinguish things, what might be promising, what is just interesting and worth investigating, and what's not worth anything. Because although people who look into wind are a mix, there's genuine inventors and innovators who believe in what they're doing. There's people who have no idea what they're doing. And there's people who have the carnival model of business, that is, flog as much as you can get and leave town before they rumble you. That mix of people creates a, a mess that's hard to see your way through. And unfortunately, I don't think I'm very much help there because I have a tendency to see things as having value in themselves. So even if the device is going to be rubbish, I think at the bottom there could be some germ of truth that can be extracted and developed and built up and made into an actual working device. But that's my research background. However, there are a few guiding principles that might actually help to decide whether something has value or not. As a wind turbine that you can stick on your roof and begin to generate power with. And there's only really four of them. I mean, you could come up with other indicators, but these are the things that I think are the four core indicators that will indicate to you whether something's a bit iffy or not. Now, it's not telling you that something is directly a scam. It's indicating that it could well be something that you might want to wait on until you buy into it, because it could be one of those ones that in a year's time you just don't hear from again. Now, when it comes to getting a news story, there's two main ways that a reporter will do it. One way is to trawl through all the journals and have a look at the news feed, see what's coming out as a research paper, what might be interesting, and knock up a story around that. The other way is that the people who are selling a product send out press releases. And of course, journalists are like everybody else. They have stresses, they've got to meet deadlines, and if they get a press release that is glowing about something, it could well become a press story. So if you find a press story that's absolutely everywhere but has no backup to it, then that would constitute hype. It's just one of those things that people are pushing to say, hey look, I'm here. And the more of it you see and the more aggressive it is, the more likely it's have to, it will be to have not very much behind it. So you need to watch out for high hype. And that's pretty easy to spot. All you actually do is go onto Google Scholar and see if there are some research papers to back up what's being said or where the journalist got his information from, because the more reputable journalist will put a link to the paper or the release that they received in order to write that article. So you can check whether it's a bit of hype or it's a bit of something real pretty easily. Probably the next thing to check is the experience of the people involved in the project. Now, I'm not saying that you have to have experience. Lots of people come up with new ideas all of the time without any experience, but 
they pretty rare that they actually work. Normally people have been working in an industry for a very long time before they come up with their ideas. So if you check on the experience of the people involved, if that experience is low, again it's a clear indicator that you need to hold back for a second and have a think about it before you jump on board. The validation point is actually super, super important. If somebody's saying something, then if there isn't any backup to it, like a research paper or test results or a third party having checked it, then they're just saying something. They can say whatever they like. You don't have to take it on board that they're telling you their truth. When you don't have to be told the truth, you need to validate what's being said by having somebody else to support what's being said. And in the world of science, of course, what you're looking for are other scientific community people saying, hey, yeah, this is real. Hey, yeah, other people have been working on this. They've got there first. That constitutes good validation for something that you're hearing. And without validation, again, be wary of it. The other thing to be super wary of is if they present this very glossy. There's a lovely video, some really nice animations, but no real product, and the website looks awesome, but there's no real information. It'll tell you about this and that, but there's no test results, there's no performance data, there's no graphs to tell you some real information about what's going on. It's all just nice and pretty and click from this to this to this. Now remember, these are just guides to help you decide, and they're not even my guides. I've actually taken them from Paul Geip, and Paul is an uh, author, researcher, advocate of renewables who's been working in this industry for a good 30 years and runs a website called windworks.org that is well worth jumping over and having a read of because Paul is far less gentle than I am and has covered an awful lot of these up and disappeared kind of wind turbines. But we can apply these to just about everything, including a wind. So first question, is it all just hype? Well, I did only spend two days doing it, so it's quite possible that I missed something, but I couldn't find that much on it. After I got sick of looking at press releases that just linked to each other, I went on to Google Scholar and had a look there, and I could only find two things. One was a report from, I think it was an Indonesian school, who were using the oil wind as a teaching aid for wind turbines, and the other was an Indian paper that was a manual on how to construct a chopped up version of the wind turbine, the oil wind, wind turbine. Nowhere could I find any data, I didn't find any research at all all that mentioned the O wind or the omnidirectional wind or either of the authors or the inventors and as I say I did only spend a couple of days doing it so maybe I missed it but I found it very difficult if not impossible to find any real data about the O wind wind turbine. All I really found was an awful lot of press releases and invitations to um, well invest in the company and I did find one job application for Lancaster University for a master's researcher to research on wind flow patterns relating to the wind turbine and that's all I could find. The rest of it was all press releases and um, wonderful stories and some really great animations on the old wind. So you could do exactly the same as me and you'll find exactly the same, and hopefully you'll find something more, in which case it'd be great to hear from you. Looking into the people themselves, so you can do exactly what I did, and I didn't do that much. I just went up to LinkedIn and looked up the two profiles and had a look at their business history. So Nicholas uh, was predominantly, well, um, a product designer, actually. He began by working, I think it was uh, as an electrical engineer, and then he moved into furniture design. He did a stint with his brother doing architectural renovations, and then he came over and did product design and a master's in uh, international innovation, I think it was. That's his background. So nothing specifically for wind and wind turbines. He did work for a while with NASA on a project to uh, create a wheel. When I looked at Yassine, Yassine was, uh, as far as I could work out, a doorman for a number of years while he did his uh, master's, again in international innovations, and he worked for five years in a financial consulting company. And that was his background, again, 
nothing in wind turbines. I then had a look at the company and the major investor, it's an angel investment and there's three of them, but the major one is James Dyson. And from what I could tell, the same James Dyson who ran the competition. So that seems to be the background predominantly of the company who seem mostly to be into um, sales and product design. Again, people can do exactly the same thing to check what I'm saying and maybe come up with something different. But that's what I found about them. When it comes to number four, which is the validation, again, sorry, number three, the validation. Again, I couldn't find anything to validate their statistics. I found only one source of information, which was another press release, wow, isn't this wonderful video, that mentioned a figure of 20% as efficiency, but no clue as to where that figure came from. And when I was looking, I couldn't find any indication. I mean, maybe they're keeping their results close to their chest. Maybe they don't have the results, but they're certainly not sharing results as far as I can tell. When it comes to the fourth point, yeah, it, it's all very glossy. They, they are very nice animations. And if you look at the roadmap, you'll see that they've done some wind tunnel testing, but there's nothing to do about output testing and they've yet to place a pilot. So it looks to me that they really haven't got that far down an actual product to be able to tell us what it actually produces, which is why we're not getting actual production figures. And of course, with wind turbines, they're all the same thing, really. They are a method of extracting energy out of the available wind. So they're never going to be better than the energy that is in the available wind. A wind turbine captures that, the generator section turns that into electrical energy, and that's what we actually need. There has been no display, as far as I can tell, of them doing that second stage. It all seems to be very focused on wind patterns and the response of the turbine in a wind, which is great, but as I've said before, anything will spin in a wind, even if you stick a cat on a stick and hold it high enough, it's going to turn. It's not really a question of getting something to turn, it's really a question of how efficiently can it capture the wind and then translate that into electrical energy, and, and that information is certainly sadly missing from anything that I could find about it. Now don't get me wrong, I love the Owen design. I think it's a beautiful design that will grace any city street. And I think the guys are genuine and I'm not sure if they're gonna succeed or not. What I am saying is that Paul Guype would say that there are indications that this is a company that might not be around in a few years. So considering they're about to go into a crowdfunding campaign, I for one would like some more verifiable facts about how the turbine actually performs as a generator. Maybe the guys have got those results. They've certainly done a couple of videos of their prototype shown kneeling over some meters, but I'd like to have some indication about what those results are. It would be, I think beneficial for them at this stage to talk a bit about the performance or at least make that talking a bit about the performance a little easier to find because I couldn't find it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.